sure you would have wanted that game to go a little bit better than it did early on, but how good was it for the team to, to kind of have one like that? It, it was great. I mean, every team out there is trying to add to their Rolodex of situations they've been in um, and situations they have success at, uh, of course, too. But you're going to learn some lessons whether you win or lose. And I think we learned some tonight. Uh, we got better because, A, we just got to play. I mean, the, the weather kind of made you think, like, what's, or what's going to happen here? But we got to play ball. It was definitely a game where if you're not hooked up for all nine innings, um, you're going to get punched in the mouth. And, you know, it could have went for either team. You guys were there seeing the whole thing. So, again, we, we were able to learn some lessons and yet still win the game. But, um, y you know, I, I think having some guys in some situations individually that they hadn't been in yet, and then our team being in some situations that we haven't been in recently uh, was definitely a positive to take away. What were some of the good lessons that you saw from the guys and just the way that they kind of handled themselves and responded throughout the game? Yeah, I mean, I think Ben Joyce kind of coming in earlier, um, our, our starter not, not going into the sixth or seventh or eighth for the first time in a while. Um, you, you know, uh, th those stick out. Uh, Mark McLaughlin kind of came in in a different spot that he's been in in, in most situations, in particular in SEC games. And then Booker, you know, gets that hand injury and just kind of throws our plans out of whack for who he is and what he can be for this team. Uh, so I even would throw it to the offensive side that we were able to kind of do a couple different things there. How about Christian Scott? What did you learn from him past two SEC starts? He was the real spark on, on Sunday and then sparked that, that seventh inning tonight. Yeah, I mean, his first at bat was about as annoying if you're, you know, throwing to him about annoying of an at bat or as pesky of an at bat as you can put together. And then he gets on base with it. So um, he's been incredibly valuable for us ever since he stepped foot on the campus in a lot of different ways. And um, it's maybe not as talked about as much as Will Mabry kind of seems to be the guy, uh, the development conversation piece. And then Trey Lipscomb, of course, is a guy who redshirted and has kind of bided his time, although I think COVID kind of kind of got him a little bit as far as playing time goes. Um, Christian Scott has gotten better in a ton of different areas since he's been here. And the number one area is just more mature as a kid and a ball player and, and a teammate. And he's a joy to be around. So I like when he gets to get out there in the lineup, um, you know, good or bad. He's got a lot of teammates that are, that are quality players too. So um, we'll, we'll hand the baton off at some point to somebody else and then he'll get it right back. How rewarding is it, is it to see someone like him who stayed in a lot of competitions instead of transferring somewhere else kind of had the success he's having? I love it because I, I like the kid, but then if you're trying to hang your hat on, you know, something as far as when you come to work, um, guys have to like where they're at in order to stay when, it, when it's not going so good. I mean, anyone who's hitting 450 or has seven saves or something like that probably is enjoying their, their baseball collegiate experience, you know. Uh, but for other guys that are asked to pinch run or come in and bunt, or come in and play defense in the ninth inning, it's pretty easy to go home and, and gripe to your buddy or your girlfriend or whatever it might be and say, maybe the grass is greener on the other side. And I think these kids are all learning a valuable lesson that, you know, to have a good team, it takes a bunch of guys to fill a bunch of different roles. Uh, but the only way they're going to buy into that role is, I think, if they really enjoy their work environment. And I think he's one of those guys. Hey, hey, Coach. Chase, was it just a feel issue a little bit? Like yeah, a little bit, just kind of seeing it. I mean, um, you know, he said he felt great to Coach Anderson in the bullpen and just a little bit of a feel thing. Um, you know, I've had the good fortune of being around some big league pitchers, and I bet I can give you five right now real quick in my head that they didn't get out of the first inning. So uh, there's a lot of repetitions over the course of a season. And if that ends up being his worst night, which there's a decent chance it was as a pitcher, that's a pretty good worst night. I mean, he, you could tell they were fired up to face him. They certainly, as you saw, for nine innings, um, put together some quality at-bats. Uh, on top of that, they got capable athletes. It was kind of a nasty night. I mean, you could turn that to either side, whether it's a pro or con, but it, just a feel thing. And if, if that's his worst outing of the year, great. And if not, then we'll, we'll expect him to battle through those circumstances because now he's, he's kind of seen what it looks like. You haven't been calling your bullpen this early or used as many guys in a game. You know, what did you like about what you saw from those guys and how important is it to have like a seven inning stretch there where everyone comes in and does their job? Yeah, you know, you did. You liked everything about it. And, and the guy did a really good job against Camden. Um, but, but overall, you'd like to think that he contributed and kind of filled his, his piece there too. Um, the only thing that gives you a sour taste at it if you're going to go sit up in the, in the coaching staff offices is that was such a quirky deal. They, they made two switches 
Um, you know, you're, it's, you're not really set up to use your closer there. Kirby's our only guy left other than our closer. And Blade is probably, for all intents and purposes, done for the weekend after we use him tonight, um, at least in my opinion. He's going to maybe hear that and fight me about getting back out there. We'll see. But it, it was a tough one. And obviously, I, I tell you guys this all the time, if it works out, it was the right decision. And if it doesn't, it wasn't. So I, I think we made one or I made one wrong decision there or, or could have done something differently. But we, we kind of got to where we were at the end of the rope there with how many guys we got left. But Old Cordy Lawson and Trey Lipskin, they used to be pitchers. Those guys probably think they can go get three outs out there. Hey, Coach, friendly conversation with Blue earlier in the, in the game there. What, what was the thought process going through your head when, when Zoo throws the ball into the dugout? Yeah, just, um, you know, the fact that um, the catcher made a good block, if I remember that part correctly, picked it up and threw it in the dugout. And what we saw and what we heard was, time and, and, and you know hands go up for other umpires after the ball was already thrown and the the appropriate order would be to get time and then you discard the ball um, but at the same time we're looking at what we're looking at I can't see the whole field and we're not on the field so maybe there was a conversation there that was different but it was all about whether time was called after or before and so so that was our argument and then you know I come back to the dugout and everyone's yelling, have them review it. Well, I don't even know if it's reviewable. It turns out it's not. So when they did all that, they were just trying to make sure they got it right and, and fulfilled our request, which I appreciate, but it's, it's not a reviewable play. We should have drove the guy in on, on our own doing and should have done some other things better early in the game anyway. Tony, a couple more. You guys haven't trailed in a game since Rhode Island and haven't trailed for a full inning since Texas. Just what was kind of the attitude throughout that game and what, what was your message to the guys to – you know, when you guys were down too. Yeah, I don't think that was much of an issue. It was just, it was weird the first three or four innings and maybe it was because we needed to throw more strikes. There just wasn't a rhythm or a tempo there. And uh, we were making some quick outs. I mean, Miles is, he, he threw pretty well against us last year too. And now he's a, a year older and, and you could see more developed. Um, so there wasn't a real flow to the game. And there certainly, if, it, if there was one, it wasn't going in our direction. But I didn't sense any panic or stress or anything like that. Um, again, if, if our guys learned something tonight, one thing should be nine, nine innings is, is a long time. So you need to be ready to go out of the gate better than we were, and you also got to finish you know, as strong as possible. What's going through your Last mind? Question. What's going through your mind when Trey takes a shot and it's being reviewed in the fifth? I mean, how would you rate his performance today? Yeah, um, when, when that deal's going on, um, Trey comes in the dugout and the guys are all hooting and hollering, but I just wanted to let them know really, really anytime there's going to be a replay is hang out and see what they say. Um, you know, we had five cameras tonight, so you got a bunch of different angles, but there's times where you may know, I mean, Coach Kivett was the master of this. I'll go ahead and throw him under the bus. You may have saw what you saw, but these guys got to make full speed judgment calls, you know, on the fly. And then, you know, the review is there to, you know, try and get certain situations right, but maybe the camera doesn't have it. Or maybe it's not clear cut, so the, the rule is, is appropriate to go with what the umpires say. So at the end of the day, we don't have control over any aspect of that. So the best thing to do is, is hang out and, and ask what your assignment is or listen to what your assignment is and then go do it. How would you rate Trey's performance? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, you know, I, I thought we, we needed a spark from somebody, and Seth Stevenson's kind of been that guy. Christian Scott's been that guy. I feel like Ben Joyce is, is that guy. Um, when he gets on the mound and Trey is, you know, kind of been our guy that's that's been explosive in a lot of different situations. But I, I think that's kind of his best moment of the year as far as being that spark plug. And you can't ask a guy to go hit a home run. Um, but I don't think he liked his first at bat. He didn't like how the score was and he, he was determined to do something about it. So we got the good result. And I think after that, you know, he like our team maybe didn't have a great start to the game, but I thought he was very polished the rest of the game. Thank you.